Welcome to My Life, Tanya Applied with Rabbi Simon Jacobson, a journey into the deepest teachings of Torah and their application to our personal, emotional, and psychological lives. A good tevach, a good week. We continue our journey in the life-changing Sefer Tanya. This program is made possible by Rina Lights LLC and it is in honor and memory of Rabbi Yisuf Alevi Weinberg Olav HaShalom, Rabbi Meshav Pinchas HaKoyen Katz Olav HaShalom, Rabbi Yael HaKoyen Khan Olav HaShalom, and it is in Shchus Samerit of Rabbi Zebi Cheskel and HaKoyen and Risha Katz Le'erich Yom V'Shanim Tevis for many long healthy years. It's also in Shchus of our holy soldiers of the Tzahal that are standing on the front lines and fighting to protect and defend Jewish men, women, and children in the Holy Land in Eretz Yisrael, and may the Hashem protect them in Eden everywhere, and may the hostages be released unscathed, where we finally have total Vinasati Shalom Ba'aretz. So we're in chapter 17, Perik Yud Zayin, talking about Korav Elecha Hadover Me'ed Beficha Ubelvovcha La Seisei. Now, based on the understanding what we learned till now, that you don't have to be a tzaddik for korve lacha dover me'ed b'fichu b'lvov chala seisei. A tzaddik for sure has that because libam b'reshusam. A tzaddik completely controls his heart. As we learned in chapter 10, that a tzaddik has, in chapter 9 and 10, especially chapter 10, that a tzaddik has completely eliminated and even transformed the animal soul. He controls his heart's impulses. That's a tzaddik. That's a unique individual. What is midas kolodam? Vacharer kolodam yimshech. Midas abeni, abeni is the so-called average person. Each of us has the power, naturally, to control our hearts. Through moyach shal talev. That's through avoid a deliberate effort. And therefore, for everybody. Beficha, bulvavcha, la seise. Ah, he may not, like he says, we see bechush. We actually see that people can't control the heart of their animal soul, meaning the emotional impulses of it, he says. However, you can, even if you cannot awaken and stimulate a full blown love, you can affect talumis libe, as he explained at length in chapter 16. That means the bilvovcha la seise, enough of the emotions that come through his contemplation that will control his actions, la seise. That, that's in his, in his power. So it's karavelecha dover to every person. Vizek kola odom, and that's kola odom, which is like midas kola odom. The ik is that it should come to asiyah. So it has an element of bilvovcha. Maybe not a full fiery passion, but still enough to affect his actions. But then comes the second part of this chapter. How about the Rosh? She says, Im loy mishu Rosh be'emes. So he qualifies now because the under end of the Maim Chazal is, so now we have the Tzadikim is Libam Bereshusam, they control their hearts. For Abeni, he doesn't control his heart, but Moyach Shalat Alev, through the effort of Moyach, of contemplating, and the reflection of the mind, the divine soul can control the emotions, and the, in, at least in, in thought, speech, and action, in behavioral level, his life. Okay, but what about Rishoyim, Heim Bereshus Libo? So the Alter Rebbe says, this is talking about a Rosh Be'emes, a Rosh Be'ralei. At the end of chapter 11, it talks about Rosh Hashanah, where he has, with a toiv, is literally in a state that is nostalgic mekib of emet b'chinis makiv v'lov mal We gave the example of an addict. He's been so immersed in his own selfish needs and desires of the animal soul that the good remains somewhat removed from him. It's never gone, but he's a Rosh Hashanah. And there is a shoyim reshus libam, he doesn't just say there, because you could say, 
that their heart is generally under the, their, 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 they, their behavior is under the control of their emotional impulses control them, the, the Rasha. But Ein Liban Bereshusam Klam means he's unequivocally negating any control, which also testifies that there's being a Rasha Be'emes. And how does a person get to a place? We know naturally, this is inherent, like he says in chapter 12. So he says, The intensity of their involvement in things that are antithetical to godliness creates an enish, a consequence, an enish, that does not let them really control themselves. It's similar to an addict, after a while, in a way, loses his free will. So we don't want to say he loses his free will because when they learn, he could do tshuva, just like an addict can, can, uh, can go through rehab and heal. But at this point, the toxins of his life have taken such effect that said the girdle of Eitzim that he does not have that power of Meir Shal Ta'alev in Avedis Hashem, as we discussed and emphasized. So then, well, how do we say Karavei Lecha Dover Meid? which is talking about all people. So he says, The Teira in saying Karvelech is not talking about a person Mesim. And this type of person, Chayeim, Kruya Mesim, a Rosha, even in their lifetime, is called like a mess, spiritually speaking. Because he's so under the control of his animal soul that he's not, he's not living a divine and spiritual life. It's a completely hedonistic, materialistic life, or almost complete. So that's a person that's called B'chayeim Kriya Mesi. This does not mean he cannot change, and this does not mean that it's, per- that it's in every situation, even a Rosh Hashanah can do good, but it means that's his dominant personality at this state of his life. That's important. In his matzah right now, just like when we talked about the Benini, that never does that's his state of being right now. That, as the Rebbe explains, that would rule out anyone being a Baini if you did one sin. But he can get to a state, that's his personality type, that's his archetype, so to speak. So, for example, when a person is, let's say, an artistic personality, he's not always doing art, but his personality is such. The personality of a tzaddik, we talked about there, the Yitzhar, the Nefer Shabbamis has been eliminated. Question is to what extent it's been transformed. The personality of a Baini is Mayach Shal Talev. Thought, speech, and action are under his control. But his Yetzirah is active. His Nefesh Abam is the Melech, the, the animal soul, is active. However, he keeps it at bay. And there too, there are many levels as we learned. The state of being of a Rosha in general is Nefesh Abam is the dominant force. A Rosha Vetevle, it's essentially... It can go either way. It's 50-50, 60-40, 70-30. Talked about the different levels of a Rosh of a table, and there are many levels. Bottle B'Shishim, Bottle B'Meya, etc., that we learned in chapter uh, t- 11. A Rosh of a his state of being is such that it's become a hedonistic, addictive personality to materialism. He's, 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 he's addicted to the material world. That's his animals, that's his state. As such a state, that's a state of mesim, of a mess, spiritually speaking. Like spiritually deadened, deadened. Again, he could do tshuva, as we'll soon discuss. And that's why at this point, Karav Elecha Dover Me'ed, Teir is not speaking about that type of person. Karav Elecha, that doesn't mean the Teir is not speaking to him in general, the Tatum wants him to do tshuva. The Tatum wants him to do mitzvahs anyway. It's not like, oh, you're in that state, so therefore the Tatum stops speaking. That's why the Rebbe makes that very clear in his notes on this. That is Chayi B'chol Kula. And he's responsible for his behavior. So it's not regarding Kodav Lecha, to say Kodav Lecha, that it's easily accessible and relevant to him at this state that he's He's essentially pulled himself out. Like when you say an addict can't help himself anymore. He's going to need outside help. He's, he's fallen to a point where he's not in control of this aspect. Okay. So, and then he continues. That now he adds. 
It's not just that it's not cut of made, but it's in truth, this Rosh Ba'emes can't really begin serving God. This doesn't mean that sporadically and that means he can't do mitzvahs. It means he could. But serving God to be in a state that he's serving God, Lavet Hashem, as long as he's in a matzav of Rosh Ba'emes, he's gotten to that point where the, the, the punishment is such that's not letting his moyach shaltal lev. So that's not in play, meaning he can't access that. So, um, and, and he has gotten himself to the place where he's like, Kruya Mesim. So, Bamela, he's in a state that he came to get serving God. Lava Dashem, in a steady form that you could say he's a servant of God. He's not, he's a servant of materialism. I would say he's a slave. To materialism. So this is firstly it adds to that, but then this also leads to the next point. But all is not lost. This is only on condition that he doesn't do tshuva. But if he does tshuva, it changes, everything changes. And the mistress tshuva applies here. As a matter of fact, one of the interpretations in Korov Lecha Hadover. What is Hadover? There's two interpretations. In general, Tere Mitzvah, Hadover is, is Tshuva. So there you could also see the connection to the Korov Lecha here. The verse of, as it's interpreted as Tshuva. He could do Tshuva. And when he does Tshuva, he takah changes his status. So that which is heart, his emotional impulses are controlling him. Tshuva is going to change that. Why, did, why is Tshuva changing that? Because Tshuva breaks the heart. That very heart that has now become addicted to and consumed with materialism, hedonism, and all the pleasures of this world, this Tshuva is going to, be, is going to break the clipper the shell that is causing him not to be able to access godliness, including the Moyach Shal Talev power that he has. Like he says, so what does the tshuva do? The Shabbat klipas to break and shatter the klipas, the husks. Which have formed. They are a curtain of separation and an iron wall. He speaks about two levels of klipas here. The Rebbe's father explains that the two levels, Mosach Mavdil, which is a curtain of separation, goes on klipas nega. But it's still klipa nega, klipa daka, it's still a subtle klipa shell, transparent one. Means that, that, like for example, the shell of a grape, you can still see the fruit within it. And then mechitza shel barzel. That's more intense. That's like an iron wall, which interposes and separates between the person, the one who's sinning, and his father in heaven. Between them and their father in heaven. Who's them? The Rosh Who's them? The Rosh and that, the Rebbe's father explains, is Shal Shlipas Atmeis, which is a far bigger schism, a far bigger separation and dissonance. So it's two levels of dissonance he's referring to. Now that's what's happened. That's what's happened to the Rosh Ba'emes. Tshuva, however, changes that. Why? Because Tshuva introduces Ayyadeh Shvidas Libay Marina Snafshe Al Chatov. Through feeling heartbroken and embittered on their sins, in their souls, over their sins, Shvidus Libay. So Shvidus Libay means that he's breaking the shell. And that's exactly what an addict has to do. Because it's taken over and so controlling that nothing can get in. No positive thing, or can barely get in. You have to break the shell. You have to break the resistance. You have to break that wall that's blocking him. And that's through Shvidus Libay. And Meridus Nafshe, a deep sadness, a sadness, an embitterment 
on the sins that I've separated. It's like recognizing how far have I wandered from myself. I betrayed myself. I betrayed the God within me, the divine image within me. So in other words, for him, it's not just enough that he regrets what he's did, which is usually the first condition of tshuva, regret, remorse, and acceptance, kabbalot teva lahaba, and what will become afterwards. But he needs to have a real bitterness, a real sh- being shattered by the life that has become of him, the hedonism, the materialistic enslavement that he's experiencing, to the point that it's become his identity for that time being. For that time being. And that's what breaks it. As the Alter Rebbe will continue more details about this breaking. But let's first go back to the theme here. When he does that, so that eliminates now this new toxin that has entered. So number one is the Moyach Shal Taleb begins active again. Because the, the, that punishment that came due to all his behavior is eliminated through this shuva, And and. Equally important, his personality now is such that he's no longer in the ghetto of Mason. He's brought himself back alive. He's been revived. And as such, he begins to heal. And therefore, the applies to him as well. So before we read on about more about the Lev Nishbar and the details of Tshuva, which is the rest of the chapter, let's just address a few key points here. Seemingly, and I brought up this question, what happens with the Rosh of Tevle? We said that Tzadik he's, he completely controls his heart. The Benini is Meich Shal Ta'olev. His mind controls it, meaning at least controls it in terms of thought, speech, and action. The Rosh of MS, until he does Tshuva, is, is in control of his heart. His heart controls him, that is. And he doesn't have any, in, like he says, doesn't have any. Um, How about the Rosh Vatevle? The Rosh Vatevle would seem to be a much more common individual that never Shabbat sometimes wins and sometimes never Shalakis. Not a Bainini who's always in control of his thought, speech, and action. And Alta Rebbe went to Rosh Vatevle. So the Rebbe addresses this. This is a letter, I've been quoting parts of it, a letter that the Rebbe wrote. It's an English Kedish in the Rebbe's letters where he talks about this. It's a long letter about this whole Pedic Yud Zion, many, many details. And one of them is this issue about, seemingly, based on what we're saying here, Rosh Vatevle, since he has sins, Avenus, and we just said an oven is a klippa that creates a dissonance, a Mosach Mavdil, a separating curtain. a curtain of separation and an iron wall. So why is this sin's less of a separation? It's true. It's not the extent of a Rosh HaBemes, who's like completely dominant, been dominated by the animal soul. But, but it's still, it's a Mosach Mavdil. So the Rebbe, so the Rebbe addresses that. And what do we do? And, and, yeah. We have the Pesach in Yeshai, Avnei Seichem, Hoyim Avdilim, Beneichem, Leben Elikechem which we also was brought in early in chapter 14. So why do we say only by Rosh Hashanah he can't begin serving without Shuvah? Seemingly also Rosh Hashanah is that way. So the Rebbe explains is that, and maybe you can explain it based on what it says later in Tanya in chapter 24, that in general when a person does an Aveda, we're talking about Rosh Hashanah, in general, the, the separation of the divine is only when he's doing this sin. In the language of chapter 24 in Tanya. During the time he's doing it, so it's like you have a relationship with someone you love, but then you're doing something that is against them, against their will. So during that time, there's a, there's a dissonance, there's a disconnect. But after the action of the chet, after the sin, so after a person has done something 
that it was against the person that they love, then they commit, then then they naturally gravitate back and they reconnect. It says the goofy, the nefesh chayunus, the animal soul and the body return to sit from this klipa, and they come to nefesh the kiss without mentioning tshuva. Similarly, in a Geras HaTshuva, is chapter 6 that Rebbe brings, B'Shas V'Rega She'esahara, B'Shal V'Rega She'esahara. But by Arosha B'Emes, you don't say that. Arosha B'Emes has gone to the point where he's gone off the reservation to the point that his personality is now a hedonistic, materialistic one, like an addict. So it's not like somebody that's once done something that, that is toxic or even a few times. But his personality has not become an addictive one. So Arosh HaBa'ema is there, the Tevet says, Nistalik Mekib of Emechin Smakif Alav Mamayla. It's Nistalik. He's in a new state. He's fallen to a, a, a new low. So the Nisham is therefore disconnected until Tshuva, until he breaks that Klippa, the Klippa has now become a, a, a presence, a powerful, dominant presence in his life. The Rebbe also just qualified, just in case you're wondering, at the end of chapter 39 and chapter 40 in Tanya, it does say that in order to elevate the Gdusha, you need true tshuva. So the Rebbe says, answers, so Cheder, this is not what he just said. He just said, you don't need tshuva for the Rosh of a Tevle. So he says, That you're talking about elevating the Tevle mitzvahs of this person who sinned. But the Nefesh Chayunis, his animal soul itself, and his body, they elevate on their own. Because they have not become completely controlled by, by Ra, by the Klippa. They've been temporarily under that control. So it's like Klippa Snega, they have not fallen to that place. So that is how he explains this idea. So bottom line, Arosh HaVetevle, you would then say, based on this, even though he has sins, but he also has Meir Shaltal love, the, his Avenus have not gotten to the point that it's such an Enish Godel. I'm adding this to the point that his self-control has been taken away from him. In other words, he's not like the addictive, the addict. And you're not necessarily say that he's like, even though you say the shoyim, gam b'chayim, kurimesim, you could say that's dafka rosha ba'emes, <clears throat> based on this explanation. Where rosha, not by meaning a rosha, but tevle, has, has times when he's like that. But you can't call him all the time mesim, and even if he hasn't done tshuva, because he also has the divine soul and the, the goodness in him has not disappeared or has not been completely con- taken, uh, uh, completely been, null, uh, been uh, neutralized. Okay, so that explains that. Now let's go back to the Tanya now. Now that we've explained the Indian Shvira, so your breakings, which is a, a tremendous lesson in all forms, whether it's addictions or other forces that have taken control over our lives, so if it's a person who is more or less, we'll call it sane and balanced, but unfortunately has fallen. So there, obviously you have to constantly work on yourself and to access the Moyach Shal Talev and all the other Eitzes advice that Alta Rebbe gives us and how to control your animal soul. But once a person has fallen to a place where the, the, the darkness of his life have become hardened like a klipa, encasing him and trapping him, like holding him hostage and captive, the only way out, you have to break out. And how do you break out? That's shvirus ha leiv nishbar. It's the only way, because if not, that remains like a fortress. Or they use exact words, like he said, a curtain of separation and an iron wall. How do you break a curtain of separation and an iron wall? You have to break through. So now the Alter Rebbe, as he always does, brings sources to, 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 um, to establish and um, affirm this point. Kamesha Kosa B'Zeyar, Al Posik, Zivchei Elikim Ruach, Nishbar Alev, Nishbar V'Gemer. So the Posik says, this is a Posik in Tehillim, Nun Alef Yutes, 51.19, the Pasuk says like this. And then we'll talk about the Zayar and the Pasuk. 
The Pusuk says, Zivcha Likim Ruach Nishbara, Lev Nishbara Vagamer. A broken spirit is a sacrifice for God. Zivcha Likim Ruach Nishbara. So you read that Zivcha Likim, a sacrifice for God, is a broken heart. Or a broken spirit, we should say. Ruach Nishbara. A broken spirit. And then he continues, and a heart that is broken. The continuation of the Pasuk is a heart that is broken and contrite. You do not reject, O God. That the Ebishter will not reject such a person. That's the full Pasuk. So there's talking about two things here. A ruach nishbar, a broken spirit, and a lev nishbar, and a broken heart. So if you look back at the Alter Rebbe's Lashem, what was the line right before? He says, Shvidus libei umedidus nafsheh. Talked about a heart and nefesh. Here he uses the word ruach nishbara. So maybe we have to be medayik why it says nefesh, ruach, and lev. Maybe we'll understand that from the continuation. That's the posik. What does the Zaya say in this posik? The posik itself, it seems like that the heart, the spirit, has to be broken, and the heart has to be broken of the person. So it's referring to the person. But the Zaya teaches further, more than, even more than that. That we're not just talking about the person, we're talking about the klipa. As he says, Shaydei Lev Nishbar. Through a broken heart, it shatters. The impure spirit, through a broken heart, it shatters the impure spirit of the sitra achra. So in other words, it's not just talking about the gavra, the person, it's also talking about the actual clip of that, that established. Because if you were talking about just the person, so in a way you could say the person, okay, he's done things, we talked before, he's done things that have had a negative impact on him. But like we spoke about the Rosh Hashanah, it could be that he will naturally gravitate back to his healthy state, even though he behaved in for a moment in an unhealthy way. But it's more than that. He, a clip has been built. We said a, a curtain of separation, an iron wall. So, so, so his broken heart actually breaks that clip of that wall. And as it breaks that clip, that's what allows a new energy to enter. Which, which changes his status, and he can then, do, through the tshuva, can then reach the level of including But due to time limits, we're going to stop here, and we'll continue with, Alter Rebbe actually gives us sources in the Zayar, and we'll continue that in the next year. Everyone have a good avoch. TanyaApply.com is this program, and all other previous programs, as well as any questions that you'd like to submit. This has been My Life, Tanya Applied with Rabbi Simon Jacobson. Please join us again next week. Visit chasidasapplied.com for archived classes and more resources.